Hello everyone. My name is Ashi Sharure. Uh, I work at XXL at the Office of Chief Data Officer and my function is Data First Line of Defense. Uh, today we are looking at documenting the usage of data in a data intelligence platform. Uh, so thank you for joining and uh, hopefully you will find this session to be useful. Uh, let's start. Uh, what is data documentation? And let's even take a step back. What is documentation? Um, so I found this interesting quote from uh, Damien Conway, um, and uh, I, I think it represents um, my, my uh, thinking as well. Uh, documentation is a love letter that you write to your future self. Um, again, I, I agree because I think um, once you have that documentation, uh, that's something that you're going to rely on in your future. So that is, uh, I think that's pretty accurate. Um, so let's look at what is data documentation. Um, I think data becomes useful only when it is uh, it has meaning and context associated with it. <clears throat> so how can you make uh, how can you bring context to uh, to it by applying metadata? You can actually bring uh, make your data more meaningful. Um, and um, again, metadata is really data about data. Uh, and we will dive deeper into what metadata is relevant for maybe your organization because there is no one size fits all and uh, every organization is, is different. Um, but it would, you know, we, we, would, uh, we would look at, um, we will spend time understanding what would make sense from a metadata uh, perspective and uh, how does it help uh, bring context. So um, again, if you treat your data as an enterprise asset, um, you do need to document all aspects of data so your organization becomes uh, data driven. Um, and, and in order to make your data, um, your organization data driven, um, the data documentation actually helps uh, pave the way for, uh, for your data to become an enterprise uh, asset. So uh, the key question here is if you don't document, does the data exist? And hopefully we'll answer that question later. So moving on. Um, uh, let's look at why document, right? So you wonder uh, in an organization, what is the importance of um, having documentation? So there are two angles that I'd like to cover here. Uh, the first angle is the defense angle in which um, you're, you're really looking at protecting your organization. And now that risk is either from your from the regulatory, regulatory perspe perspective or from a security perspective. Um, even audit or even other um, risks such as uh, reputational damages that your organization may fee face and how um, documentation, data documentation helps you um, uh, to defend your data. Um, the other aspect which is also important is um, it gives a chance for your uh, data to, uh, to fight against name calling such as dirty data or bad data that we hear. But if you have a way to protect uh, that, um, that reputation of your data, um, you could do that if you document. So that's the, that, those are the two angles from a, from a defensive perspective. Let's look at from an offense perspective. Um, what can it do to make your organization more efficient? How can you get more edge over your competition? Uh, you can if you can actually make your data as an, as an organizational asset where your data actually helps you and your business understand um, the, the, the data and all the, all the aspects of it, they can actually make much more informed decisions and they can make decisions that are based on facts. Uh, and that's how you can actually make your organization more competitive and you can increase your trust in data and which is really goes a long way in, in, in building your organization and making it more competitive. So we covered both defense and offense uh, mechanisms here. Um, now let's look at um, you know how we make, um, what to document. So again, there is no right or wrong way to to document in the sense what you need to document, right? And it may depend on different organization um, what is important to you and and what is important to you uh, is is dependent on your organization. And every organization it may be different. Um, you are really looking at what stories can you uh, can you make. Can your data tell um, when you add those pieces of metadata to it? So we'll look at some of the things from my experience. I, I see it, but you should look at from a your organization perspective what is important um, and and what story is data trying to tell. So if you think about your data could speak, what would it say? And that's really what is going on here. 
So I'm covering a few aspects um, that are that in my experience have been have been useful for me. Um, but again, as I said, um, we are we are talking about uh, things that may be relevant for you for your organization. So again, we talked about metadata being data about data. An example of metadata would be the definition of a term uh, and how it's classified. That is metadata. Um, so we're looking at business glossary. So from a business glossary, we're collecting business metadata. What does the data mean? Some examples even to, for people to understand what that is. If you have some calculations as to how uh, a metric is calculated, all those are, are business uh, glossary, business metadata. Another example is technical metadata, uh, where you can actually look at the technical metadata, but, but on the data ownership that uh, is also associated with data that tells you which, um, uh, what are the people that are associated with that data, whether they are playing a role as, a, as an owner or a steward or subject matter expert, that capture, uh, capturing of that information is important as well. Talked about technical metadata, so where is the data stored, what is the data type is, and some of the other technical uh, pieces are important to collect so that you get complete understanding. And again, different user personas may have different angles. So some business users may be looking at more from a business uh, glossary perspective um, and maybe some data analyst and technology focused uh, folks would be looking at technical metadata or a combination. So all, all those pieces as much as you can collect would be useful. Data lineage is another um, good area that can be can help with your data documentation and can tell you uh, the story uh, of the journey that data has made since the origination, as we know, some transformations happen in organizations. So understanding all those uh, pieces, where does the data come from, can actually help you um, answer some of those questions. <clears throat> Another piece that I found very useful is report catalog. So when you talk to business, I think they are looking at from their angle, it's really important for them to know when they're looking at a report, understanding uh, you know, what are the elements that are making, uh, making into the report, what, what about those and how those are linked to uh, some of the other um, metadata that we looked at. So if a report is using a, uh, a column, what is that column? Who owns that column? Where does the data come from? So capturing the report metadata is very useful for business. So keep that in mind. And, and again, you're developing a, a, a universal glossary so that everybody speaks the same language. So all of this collection of data uh, helps you reduce the ambiguity with data and also helps you speak this helps your organization speak the same language let's look at the other pieces uh, of metadata reference data which is you know master data or reference data really solid to to include that in your documentation to give um, you know or your organization the the same reference uh, mechanism that you use for uh, let's ex take an example of country codes or state codes uh, or some of the other industry standard codes that you want to be using and you want to be uh, providing information around uh, what is the source for that data and, and what are those code sets or, or uh, code values. Um, another area that is important uh, and it's emerging is the data policy. So um, as any industry, uh, many industries that we, we talk about, um, they have some kind of a regulatory um, and, and audit uh, related um, matters that they need to, to uh, account for. So if you can actually document all your data policies, whether those are security compliance, uh, information security policies, or regulatory uh, uh, compliance policies, uh, documenting them, uh, the standards that may be associated with that, on what principles they follow, um, useful to have. For example, um, under GDPR, uh, which is a European uh, general, data protection, uh, general Data Protection Regulation, uh, you may want to document your retention rules, so you can only uh, you you can actually show that you are keeping the data only for the business purpose and for the duration that it has been approved for. So having the data policies documented um, can help a long way uh, in your organization's um, documentation process. Um, another area that is actually very important uh, and critical for many organizations is to understand the quality of data. Um, and, and to document your data quality is is almost like making your making making your data talk about itself. So if the data quality is not that great and it's being used in reports, when people are making decisions on that reports, they should be aware of those. 
uh, and what is the data quality and again at different data quality dimensions exist in different organization depending on your uh, maturity of your organization but whether it's um, it's completeness of data timeliness of data uh, validity of data accuracy of data all of those components and what is the score for for your data points uh, across all those different dimensions that can actually help um, your, your business users uh, understand your data and also uh, help them self-serve. Um, let's look at the other uh, issue, which is uh, other um, piece of metadata, which are data issues and somewhat related to data quality. Um, but what are the data, data issues that may be, uh, you know, affecting your, your, the quality of data, having that understanding and what is the status of that, uh, those issues can help you, uh, your users trust your data and also trust in the process that you have for, uh, for data issues and in, in general, uh, the documentation. So capturing uh, the data issues is, is very important um, to, to document from a, from a process perspective. Um, a new area is relatively new area is the data access rights. And again, more uh, coming from, uh, as we all experience the data uh, protection and regulatory pressures to document what data access rights we have and, and your um, data and the business applications that you support, um, who can view that and who can access what and, and uh, also keeping track of um, who has access to this information um, can also build, can help you build uh, a, a very strong relationship with your um, data privacy office. Um, another area which is also related to data access rights is the breaches. Um, as, as we are seeing more and more, um, you know, the data breaches have become more common. Um, it's important to actually log and uh, keep an audit trail of all those breaches uh, to provide complete transparency to your organization's management of data. Um, also important is to, to document the data processes. So this actually helps you explain uh, to your uh, to your consumers, what business, uh, what processes actually capture the data? If there are processes that actually change data, you want the complete transparency of the business processes and also understanding who owns those process. Um, and if there are any changes that are done to those, uh, to your data, which processes do that? So in case you have to make changes to the data, you know what is the impact of that changes, um, that change brings to those processes and you can inform those uh, business process owners and also inform uh, others who may be relying on that those processes. So that's a useful area. And uh, lastly, the data sharing agreements, which are really between the consumers of data and producers of data, help you define the service level agreements. So there is clarity on, you know, what is the availability of data? What is the acceptable data quality maybe? Uh, and if you have that in your data sharing agreements, that can actually help communicate and, and any, any uh, issues that may be um, may be experienced uh, that are outside of your service level agreement so you can track them. So again, uh, if your data could speak, what would it say? Uh, and again, I've listed a few uh, pieces of uh, metadata that I think are useful, but again, the, this is not a um, complete list by any means. You can find, uh, and I've always come across new pieces of metadata that organizations are collecting, and that helps organizations uh, you know, talk about their data uh, and, and build more trust in the data. So now that we have looked at what to document and why to document, let's look at um, how to document. And this is where um, we, are, we, are, we are actually gonna be taking advantage of the, the smart intelligent platforms that we are seeing uh, as of today. Now we, we've looked at uh, documentation, why documentation is important and what to document. Uh, the next logical question is how to document them. So do you need a process to, to follow a process to document and how does that process uh, work? Is it manual or automated? So that's the first question. And I think manual versus automation is always uh, an easy answer. Uh, it may be expensive to, to do automate process, but um, because once you document, the information needs to be main, managed and in order to keep it current, you need to automate. Uh, and that's where your intelligent data platforms of today uh, such as Calibra and Informatica come in handy, where you can automate uh, the collection of this information by leveraging workflows. And by leveraging workflows, you can control the outcomes. So for example, if you are collecting a, a you're capturing a new business term, you want to make sure that you, you have a process around 
how to onboard that um, that new business asset and then who approves that and if there are changes who is going to be making those changes and who is going to be approving those changes so by defining these workflows and by by um, uh, you know including others who have a role to play here you're creating a collaborative process that's sustainable and that can actually control the outcomes i'm sharing here a simple workflow um, that really defines when a new dashboard is is created or a dashboard needs to add a new business term it goes through a council to uh, to propose a new business term and that is then reviewed by um, by stewards or owners of data and once it's approved uh, that then becomes um, you know accepted and it's used in the dashboards and processes and you want to make sure that it's used consistently. So and again, this is this is a very simple example, but the point here is that you want to make sure that your your processes uh, for capturing uh, information are, are are well documented, and you have roles and responsibilities of people who are uh, participating in in the workflow, and they understand what their role is, and uh, nothing is left to chance, nothing is left for uh, um, you know nothing falls through the cracks. So that's really um, defined by defining these workflows, um, you can you can control those outcomes. Let's move on to the, the next piece, which is metadata data, uh, data change management. Um, and you might wonder uh, what is what is how is this different from a data change management? So metadata, as as just be any piece of data, can also go through changes. Once, once you know that once you create a document, uh, it's almost instantaneous that it starts to become uh, you know stale because things change, and we know we cannot uh, prevent changes from happening. Changes are inevitable, and data is not an exception. So we know that those changes will happen, and if your documentation is not up to date, it will erode that hard-earned trust that you built into your into your data very very quickly. So uh, keep that in mind that you know when you have a way to capture metadata. You should also have a process to keep it current, and you should develop a process to ensure those uh, those changes are captured. Um, and you 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 need to ensure that you are clear the roles and responsibilities, so that you know those changes are actually uh, followed up, and uh, those changes are going through approval process, and those changes are actually communicated. Uh, it's not just enough to approve those changes, but also there are dependencies. There may be dependencies on that metadata. Uh, let's say you have a report where where you're using a metric and if there are any changes to the calculations you want to ensure that people who are using um, that uh, that information are aware of those changes and and you want to make sure that uh, the consistency and uh, conformance is, is managed throughout the organization so it's really important to to document the data changes uh, understand what you know what roles uh, are, are available to in, in, you know, enforce those changes and ensure those changes are communicated accordingly. Um, so now that we have looked at uh, this information, we, we should look at how does this help with the regulatory compliance? Um, so we have um, we have documentation that we have we've talked about before. We've looked at different types of documentation, but what is what are the regulators look for? So if you think about regulators, um, and if you are one, you know that you're looking for controls. You can, you can actually, you want to, to be able to document uh, and evidence those controls that are in place. And it's not just, it's not just uh, okay to show that you have, um, uh, it's not just okay to tell that you have controls, but you have to actually show that your controls are there and they are working. Uh, so you have to evidence those. So if you have structured process, uh, as we were talking about before, where you have predefined outcomes and you know that those are controlled, uh, those will very will help um, regulators in a big way to build their confidence that your processes are actually dependable. Um, and if you can evidence uh, for supporting your business process, that is also very important for you, for your regulators to 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 provide. And in some cases, they may be actually supporting uh, some of the queries that have come from an external regulators um, or external auditors. So to be able to evidence, uh, and that evidence can only come if you document the process. So why are we talking about this? Because we are documenting, and if you're documenting, we can support those kind of uh, uh, queries that come from uh, regulators and auditors. So um, this is this is a, the critical piece for a regulatory compliance person 
uh, to to be able to uh, to see and and for themselves the what controls are in place. Um, audit trail and logging of information, right? So not only that you 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 can show that there are there is a process and there is a repeatable process, but also to be able to understand who has changed what and when. Uh, and and if you can log that information, if you can uh, keep that information current, and if you can share that information uh, with the regulators, and you have the ability to do that. That's really what will uh, help along uh, with with the regulatory compliance and, and for security folks who are doing this day in, day out. Um, what does a well-documented organization look like? Um, as you can imagine, if you have documented all the all those pieces that are that are making your data complete its story, you're really building a data PDF for your organization that can help self-serve. So when your data can answer questions on its own without the need for a middleman, think about the, the resources that you, uh, you may not need and you can save cost. Um, you, can, you can bring down the cost of uh, resources because now your data can, can speak for itself. Your data can answer questions on its own without the need for a middleman. And also when you don't have a middleman and when your consumers of data are able to, to see the data because it's transparent, they can answer the questions themselves, they will have a lot more trust in that data uh, compared to if somebody else is providing them something because they have no way to know if, uh, or they have no way to verify if that information is accurate. So those are, those are really um, important points and an essential pieces in decision-making uh, is that your decision-making is based on factual data and not based on assumptions because you are, as a business, um, uh, as a business person, you're making decisions based on the data that is something that they can verify themselves and it's it's based on facts and it's not based on assumptions so so really a well uh, documented organization can answer these questions on their own and uh, that can make them data driven organization so um, and also uh, in addition to your uh, consumers of data your regulators can feel confident because in their responses they can their, their queries can be uh, supported by documents and uh, you know they can evidence uh, the, the real controls that are in place. So by doing all of these pieces, your your organization uh, can actually get more mature and and score higher on on data maturity assessment because you have uh, done all these data documentation um, and again um, you know you can always uh, show progress. And, uh, and, and, and it could be a journey and you know, it's, it takes a while to, to get to that point. Uh, so nobody expects this to happen overnight and, and this is a journey. This is something that can be done uh, over a period of time. Uh, but as long as you're collecting the, this piece, these pieces of information, you can be rest assured that you are, um, you're, it will be well received uh, within your organization and any, um, any external parties who are looking at your data and they can answer those questions themselves. So let's quickly do a recap uh, of what we what we talked about today. Uh, well, your data deserves to tell its complete story, where it came from, uh, what it uh, what it does, who's using it, who are the contacts, if you have any questions. Um, and and uh, we looked at um, what is documentation, why to document, what to document, how to document, how to keep it current, how does documentation help build trust in data and help with the regulatory compliance. So data documentation is not just a nice to have today, but it's essential to stay competitive in business. Um, and you have the more types of metadata you can collect, the, the more complete your story, your, your data story is gonna be. Um, and that enrichment is, is really gonna be helpful for your organization become data driven. Uh, we looked at just as important as uh, to keep the documentation um, or collect the documentation is to capture all the changes um, because without capturing those changes, the story is incomplete or, 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 not, um, or not up to date. Um, we also looked at how we can leverage today's tools that are offered by today's intelligent data platforms to manage the data documentation. Um, we looked at, um, we looked at all, all different types of uh, data that we collected. And again, going back to the, the previous question that we talked about, if you don't document it, does the data exist? The answer is maybe, maybe it does, but no one will believe it uh, because they have no way to know or, or see it for themselves. So, um, so to recap, um, really cap cap uh, capturing the information um, uh, is, is essential for organizations to be data driven 
and for your business to be data driven is for your data uh, for your business to survive and to uh, to to have an edge over its competition and for organizations that actually achieve the data documentation are able to uh, to reap the benefits um, that we talked about uh, let's move on to the q a i hope you found this uh, this session useful uh, let's go to q a thank you Thank you.